That's better. Well struck. All right, folks, welcome back to the channel and to another Hickory Hacker course vlog. This week we're playing pre-1935 Hickory Golf at Shepherd's Crook Golf Course in Zion, Illinois. Shepherd's Crook is a municipal course, probably one of the best I've ever played, and it's set right next to the city dump, which makes it a pretty interesting setting for golf. It was designed in 1999 by Keith Foster as a link style layout, and I think it really makes use of the topography here very well. So here's what's in the bag sponsored by Stewart and Jacoby. Using my primary pre-35 Hickory set, which include five authentic irons, my trusty Tom Stewart RTJ putter, a McGregor Master Brassy I'm not using much lately, and a title is True Field Ball. And here's a scorecard for the front nine at Shepherd's Crook. I'm playing from the gold tees today, which is 6,000 yards total. And everything gets started with number one, which is a par four, 326 yards. Pretty easy going hole to get things started off here at Shepherd's Crook. Here's my playing partner today, my best bud, Tim Shaw, using his modern set. Can't get him to try hickories yet. And here's yours truly. Starting things off with the Tom Stewart driving iron off the tee. I right, kick back. And uh, that's going to be the common theme of this round. I only used the brassy once in this round off the tee. The rest of the holes I was using the uh, Tom Stewart driving iron and uh, this was the the round of the season where I really convinced myself that I need to just stick with the driving iron off the tee because it's just way more consistent for me. So I mentioned that uh, this is probably one of the best municipal courses I've ever played. I really mean that and not just because it's in the backyard where I grew up in northern Illinois. Um, I had pretty much already gone up to uh, college in Milwaukee by the time this course opened in 1999. So it wasn't one that I played on a regular basis um, other than when I came back home. But uh, if you watch my Shiloh Park golf course vlog, uh, that course is the first course that I really started to play golf on. And that's also part of the Zion Park District, which this course is a part of. So I really think feel like this course is a gem. And I think you're going to see that as we go. Some of these holes are just really beautiful, and um, like I said, I feel like it, it fits the topography of this land very well. Keith Foster's known for kind of blending his golf designs into the natural landscape seamlessly, and uh, he had a kind of fun project here, I would think. You know, he had land that's basically shaped by the dump, which is next door. I, I don't know if, if there is actually garbage underneath what we're playing on here right now, but... Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if this is kind of the old section of the dump that dates back to maybe several decades ago. And um, eventually the dump that's active next to this course will get filled up with garbage and they'll, you know, obviously fill that in with grass. And I think you'll have some really beautiful vistas when that happens. All right, moving right along, number three is par four, 309 yards. This is one of my favorite holes in the front nine, and I do prefer the front nine to the back nine here. Just way more comfortable with several of the holes here on the front. That was another good strike with the Tom Stewart driving iron. Apologize for not having Tim in these uh, first few holes very much. He and I were on different parts of every hole, it seemed, uh, in the early going. We'll get some shots of Tim a little bit later on. Here's a nice out using the McGregor flanged yeah, Mashy Niblick. We've since moved on to a different club out of the sand, but uh, that was a pretty good save there. And putting's not terrible yet in the early going. All right, number four, first par three, 187 yards, one of the toughest holes on the course. Here's Tim. He's playing from the tips today, using his hybrid here. Right. Kick left. Kick. And I do believe that was uh, more than 200 yards back there. Oh, I think I might have just held up. Oh, yeah, you did. You're in the front of the green. I think I'm on front below the hole. Yeah, I tried to put a little too much on that one, and uh, that's usually what happens when I do that. I hook it. Too far from the hole here, but I got a tough shot to get over this bunker using the flange mashy niblick, and uh, that's the chipping technique I've really been practicing a lot lately. Very happy with that result. Happy with 
that. There's Tim's birdie putt from the front of the green. He ended up cleaning that up for par. And I did not read that putt well at all. I think I read that one okay, I just didn't put enough pace on it. So that's, that's tough. All right, number five, par four, 375 yards. So the first four holes kind of had a lynx feel to them. With these trees up ahead, you start to get more of a wetland, parkland feel to the course. Kind of its other, the course's other personality, which I think is very interesting. It's kind of a weak tee shot there with the driving iron, pushed it right. But I got it out there. And that's more than I can say for what I've been doing with the Brassy lately. That's a pretty good shot there with the mashy out of the rough. The rough in several spots on this course is, is very lush. So you really want to avoid that. Uh, as you can see so far, this, this course plays beautiful with hickory clubs. And um, I know it's in Illinois, but uh, the Wisconsin Hickory Golfers, if any of you guys are watching this video, put this on your list for an event because I feel like this would be a lot of fun for a hickory golf event. That's a beautiful shot right there. It almost feels like you're in Florida or the uh, African Savanna or something. Yeah, that was a tough putt there. It, the, the video didn't show it very well, but there were a lot of mixed undulations to that putt. All right, number six is a par four, 333 yards, and it's the most intimidating tee shot on the course for me. For Tim, not so much. Went a little left on him, but he got a ton of distance out of that drive. This is actually my third attempt off the tee. My first shot went into the reeds. That's better. Well struck. Best shot of the day. Too bad it's the third shot. Yeah, it's always a bummer when your uh, third shot off the tee is uh, like that. One of my best shots with the driving iron actually all season. Just hit the sweet spot and it felt so pure. Yeah, I have a little trouble out of the rough here using the mashie. I should have been using probably the Hagen Iron Man, but I wasn't that comfortable using it in these types of situations at this point in the season. I've since gotten much better with it. So you're gonna see that a lot more in uh, you know probably 2023 course vlogs, but. and that felt good. It was a nice putt. It was a good hole, other than the uh, the botched tee shot. Moving on to number seven, par four, 316 yards. This is another interesting hole. You got two options off the tee here. You can go left, which is what Tim ends up doing, or you can go right which gives you a different vantage point into the green. And that's where I'm headed. You're down below, as you're gonna yeah. see here in a second, but I like this, I'm more comfortable with this approach shot than I am from the, the, the left side. I'm only about 140 or so yards out, so I'm using the mashie here and I'm pretty much hit that right at the flag, just a little too much. So it trickled off the back, and now this is a tough chip coming back down. I was very tentative with that because I didn't want to give it too much. You see that the green is uh, pretty severely sloped back to front, and this ball is going to take off on me here. So that sand that you see back there is the current landfill. And like I said, eventually they'll plant grass on that when that landfill is full, and it's going to be even prettier out here than it is already. Good par? Good par. All right, number eight. It's par three, 144 yards. This is where in this section of uh, holes in the trees, it just feels like a different golf course. Yeah, 
Not quite sure what was going on here on this particular day with both Tim and I off the tee on this hole, but we both end up pushing our tee shots right. It's not that far of a hole, but uh, somehow that's what the oh, tendency was down. for both of us. It's kind of a, a grass bunker area. Tim was able to get out pretty well there. I had a little more trouble though. That's what I was trying to do on the first shot. Nice putt from Tim. All right, head back toward the clubhouse, number nine. It's a par five, 526 yards. Now you get out of the forested Parkland area, back into the Lynx style. Beautiful drive there from Tim. Good ball. And here's the only shot off the tee I used the brassy on. It was okay. But honestly, I think I hit my driving iron just as far as that and uh, probably more consistently. So that's been the calculus lately. I mean, I might lose some yards on a really good shot with the brassy, but I would rather be shorter and in the fairway more often than, you know, every Thanks. once in a while hitting a good shot with the brassy that ends up in the fairway. The one thing I'll say about the driving iron for me, and I've said this in previous course vlogs, is that I'm having trouble hitting it off the deck when uh, I've got shots like this from the fairway. And um, I, I need to find maybe a 20 degree spoon or bulldog to use in those situations where the driving iron's just not as comfortable for me. Some music coming from the clubhouse. On a nicer day like this, you usually have a, a nice crowd of people on the patio watching the action on the ninth green and 18th green. So that'll wrap up the front nine. And uh, you ended up with the 54 gross, 41 net. Now headed to the back. A little bit longer, 3,100 yards. Like I said, I'm not as comfortable on these holes as I am on the front. Number 10's a par four, 389 yards. This is a bit of a blind tee shot. You can't see the green from the tee. So you just kind of have to trust that you're headed in the right direction off the tee. Tim's a little further right than you want to be there, but a nice shot nonetheless. And I was right into the wind here. And uh, hit that okay. But uh, the wind definitely cut off some distance for me. And there's another rough shot with the driving iron from the fairway. Pretty comfortable with the mashie from that distance though. If I can get within 140 yards and I'm in the fairway, I feel pretty good about my chances with using the using the mashie. Thanks. And these, I have to make these putts. When you're a high handicap player, that's pretty much the one shot you can practice every day, and I should be a lights-out putter. Uh, and, and that would be the key, in my opinion, to lowering my scores as a high handicap player. It's the one thing I can control, you know, by practicing a lot. So we'll, we'll fix that. We'll get better at that. All right, so we're on a par three here, number 11, 139 yards. Again, pushed it right off the tee, and then didn't want to do that. And I said in my head, don't go in that bunker. And of course, that's what ends up happening. Using the McGregor Mashie Niblick here. Again, trying to use the same sand shot, basically, uh, that got me out. 
And uh, actually, that was more of a flop shot. It wasn't quite the shot that I got out of the sand with, but it worked. So I'm on the green. He's putting for bogey here. That yeah, was a good run at it. All right, number 12, par 4, 344 yards. I would say this is probably my favorite hole on the back nine. Again, blind tee shot here. You're not sure where you're headed. So you just go straight. The wind ate this tee shot up too. At least I'm in the fairway though. And that was one instance where I was okay topping the shot with the driving iron because it left me short of all these bunkers here and I was able to use the McGregor Mashie Niblick again from a short distance. And uh, one of the shots of the round for me. Thanks. Again, here's a mid-range putt that uh, I know I've made in previous rounds. I gotta make it here though, you know, that's that's got to be a gimme putt for me if I want to lower my scores. i got to take advantage of those opportunities. All right, number 13, par 4, 373 yards. Yet again, another blind tee shot somewhat. You can sort of see where, you're, where you want to land this ball. Oh, shit. Sit down. That is not where you want to go, though. So I basically just kind of have to... Uh, Take my medicine here and get it back into the fairway. Okay. So I did that with the mashie. Right. Now usually this is uh, one of my favorite shots in hickory golf, but uh, not sure what happened there. Almost a shank. Pushed it way right, used some salty language, and uh, that puts me in this position now to try to get on the green. Would have been nice if that dropped, but uh, yeah, went well yeah, past the hole. Close. Tim was also on the far right side, but um, was able to kind of scramble back into position there with a nice chip. There we go. Got one of those to drop. All right, number 14, par 5, 561 yards. Playing this hole with the driving iron off the tee, kind of a tall order, but again, if I can hit it consistent in the fairway, 185, 190 yards, I'll take it. But that is not where I wanted to be. Fortunately, I got lucky here and it went over the creek and I was able to kind of find it and get a club on it to, to knock it out. So I didn't lose the ball. He just had a case of the rights today with the mashie. Kept pushing everything right. Oh, sit down. Now the putter's starting to work for me. All right, number 15, par 4, 363 yards. And you've got your favorite holes on a course, then you got your least favorite holes, and uh, this is one of mine. I just don't like these tee shots where I gotta get it over water. Um, not a big deal, really. I just, uh, it's one of those things that gets in my head. Fortunately, I made it across, but I uh, hooked it, and uh, then got unlucky there. Barely got any extra distance out of that after I hit the lip of the bunker. I know a lot of people will say, why didn't I take a, a free relief there? Well, because the, the rough was actually thicker in the area that I would have taken relief. So I just felt like I'd keep it where it was. There's another effective flop shot using the McGregor flange mashie niblick. It's become a shot that I've uh, be been more comfortable trying in different situations. Been nice to get that putt, but um, yeah, 
nice to know that I can use that shot whenever I need to. All right, short par three here, number 16, 131 yards. Actually, uh, I'm playing this from the golds, which is 107 yards. Tim's playing from the 130 yard tee. And I didn't show Tim's shot here. I, uh, you, you notice I haven't shown much of Tim sh Tim's shots on the back nine here because he wasn't feeling great. And uh, I only like to show, you know, the, the good shots of people. I don't need to show all of the shots like I do for me. So I spared Tim the uh, exposure on the back nine here. Yeah, this is just a poor display of putting all around. Long birdie putt there, but um, no excuse to miss those two. Those are pretty straight putts too. All right, number 17, par four, 328 yards. Severe dog leg left after you get over the little boggy area here. You don't want to go that far left because it makes it difficult to get around the dog leg. And that's exactly what happened to me here. I'm trying to shape this around the dog leg to the left. I ended up hitting a dead straight. And I did lose that ball, so this is my fourth shot now. That one got eaten up by the rough right out uh, next to the green here. Fortunately, I was able to get enough club on it to chip it up. The shadows can kind of uh, mess with your perception of the line on these holes. No excuse, but uh, might have been what was going on there for me. All right, heading home, number 18, par 5, 529 yards. Kind of a serpentine hole here. Multiple dog legs. Pretty good strike, but just the wrong spot. Now, on a par 5, I can't afford to lose a shot, which is basically what happens when I've got to get out of a bunker. Would have liked to get a little bit more distance out of there with the mashie, but uh, I got out nonetheless. And this was kind of wispy rough here, so I was able to get a lot of club behind the ball and use the mashie to move that about 155 yards after the downhill roll. And this is tough for me here, 170 yards to the hole, but it's an uphill uh, approach and so I knew I wasn't going to be able to make that approach in one shot so I'm laying up here in front of this creek. Oh boy. That shot came off hot, scalded a bit, but was going uphill so ended up becoming a pin high chip here but then kind of the story of the round just a lot of extra shots with those missed chips. Here's Tim holing out. Good putt. <laughs> yeah, he had kind of checked out of the round by that point. And that will do it from Shepherd's Crook Golf Course. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this round. And if you're ever in Northern Illinois, definitely give this course uh, a look. It's a lot of fun, and it's a great value, in my opinion, for a municipal course, uh, for as well conditioned as it is. I ended up with a 55 gross, 42 net on the back for a total of 109 gross, 83 net, which raises my season gross average to a 106 from a 105 before the round, but my net average stays the same at 82. Well, if you'd like to play Hickory Golf and you're looking for folks to play with, join the Society of Hickory Golfers and connect with regional Hickory Golfers in your area and find events to play in. Go to hickorygolfers.com for more information. That'll do it this week, folks. We'll be back next week with another video. In the meantime, here are a couple from the archive for you to check out. And as always, thanks so much for watching and for your support. We'll see you next time, folks. Take care.